Yeah, man. Oh, we're back. We're back. I'm mean, actually going to put this as a numbered episode because it's a Halloween book club yeah. beefer oh. thing. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome back to the welcome. Good to see you, Sean. How you doing, man? Oh yeah, doing. Uh, you know, we're 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 hanging in there. I've been I've been uh, I've been basically I've, I've been preparing all month. Uh, I I feel like uh, like uh, October is kind of like Ramadan for me, where I'm just like spooky mood, like all fucking, you know, just like spooky mood, like all fucking month. Um, October first starts up. I whip out my old Hammer films movies. I'm watching fucking. Yeah, I'm watching fucking old vampire movies. I'm watching cheesy monster movies. Uh, I'm playing spooky games. Uh, we're, I'm playing through Silent Hill 2, the beefer approved method, which is by yourself alone in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, I really do highly recommend that, by the way, because like the Silent Hill games really aren't particularly jump scary. No. There's but- really no actual jump scares like like not like while you're playing like i I would argue that the only kind of jump out stuff happens in maybe like a couple of cut scenes but it's like you're not controlling any of it you know which is probably like a better way to like handle that in general specifically i'm thinking of like you know when like it's like you just walk into a room and it just plays that fucking cut scene of that's when you see pyramid head the first time yeah walk in and he's just like fucking the shit out of that out of that you, fucking doll monster, and you, it just fucking pops on the screen, and it's it just scares the fucking crap. It's it it gets me like every fucking time. <laughs> the best part is the real. You can easily just run away from that, and you can just avoid them, and just walk away. You're like, okay, cool. But yeah, I, yeah, I had fight is like literally like it's just to juke you and like fuck you up because you don't even have to fight him because you can just you just time them out. <laughs> the one jump scare I had in that game. And uh, I, it's funny because I'm like, yeah, I have it, and I can I can play it any time. I just choose like I really don't like. There's there's enough like things where like I'm, a, I'm I had enough experience with that. Unless I really wanted to play through to get different results, which I'm sure yeah. I'm sure you've gotten like several different results. But uh, getting getting the um, I had it was in the the bar or the restaurant hotel in the the, the lakefront Lakeview Hotel, yeah, Lakeview <laughs> Hotel, and it was one of those mannequins. And I think I had the sound down. Uh, you, you have, or not, no, not, not the sound down, the radio. You know the radio transmitter that oh. attracts all the monsters? You have that. Um, I turned it down, I think, because I did not I didn't notice it. Because they don't really pop out until you see them, and then you can take them out. Those inter- yeah, those are interesting because they don't they don't actually like trigger your alarm until they start moving. Yeah, so, so- I got really close to it, and then the lights oh. start kicking out. I'm like, oh, shit. That was the Dude. only time. Every fucking time with those fucking things, something something about those ones in particular is like, uh, is like so much nastier than like it, it's probably just because there's like no like sort of face on them, so it's like you can't really like anthropomorphize them. Yeah, as, I mean, even like the 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 straight jacket monster is like you know like the one that the, it's like you know like the first one you fight and that they run around with little cockroaches on the ground when you oh, yeah <laughs> get out of it's like even though it's got like a face. And so it's like you can still kind of make out the humanness, and even you know, even like the, even like the weird stuff, like the like the like the fucking hanging dudes from like the ceiling and stuff, like those. It's like they're all kind of anthropomorphizable, but it's like the leg one is just like, just hits you with like the like insect, like <laughs> like it's something that just reads as like like insectile or like really fucking strange. <laughs> so like, but that one is like always like the most upsetting, like every fucking time. <laughs> yeah. I got a confession to make, which is that I've I've never actually played played all the way through Silent Hill two. I like I've played like the first half of it like twenty times, <laughs> and then like I always just get distracted and never finish. Okay, okay. But I was, yeah, I'm, like, I've played Silent Hill one like uh, like a million times. Like I've played one, and I've played. I've also never beat three, but I've played three a bunch. Um, I've played most of, most, but mostly Silent Hill one is okay. is am. But yeah, I, I try to I try to get uh, I try to do like one old school survival horror game every every Halloween. Like I, I did Fatal Frame last year. Okay, okay. And this year I'm doing um, this year I'm doing Silent Hill two. That's my. Are you close to beating it this time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, okay. I'm, I'm got done. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm I'm about done with like the labyrinth. Like you know when you get yeah, you go yeah they keep going down and then down and down. Dude, that dude, that one is 
that's a fucking scary area, yeah. dude. <laughs> so good. Ugh. I know we we this we could turn this into a Silent Hill podcast if we wanted to. But yeah, and I'm gonna try to turn it into my my. I, I I'm not a horror guy. I was actually kind of talking to a couple filmmakers. Um, mm-hmm. One is Stillwell, Adam Stillwell. Um, and the other one is Kevin, Kevin, I'm going to say Kulsh cause it's spelled like the beer. Oh, okay. Um, um, and he, he, uh, he made two movies. He's going to be on, I'm going to try to get him on the pod soon. Uh, one is starry. He made the movie starry eyes, uh, yeah. film called Starry Eyes, And then he got, uh, tapped to do co-direct, uh, the, the pet cemetery remake. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, I was talking to him. They're all, they're all, um, they're on a beer throw. They're all, they're all good buddies. Um, mm-hmm. and I was talking about like how I'm, I went to uh, I visited the planet's Alhambra house for um, a, a brief uh, impromptu. Uh, they were having a party, and I just kind of like uh, snuck in and, and oh, right said on. hi to everybody. And they were watching a bunch of horror movies, and I'm I don't watch horror movies. I really <laughs> um, I, I really don't because I, I and I watch the ones I do watch are like. Actually, I don't even watch them. I watch Red Letter Media, like horror movie, like like oh, yeah. like best of the worst. Like I, I, my my Halloween ritual is watching like all the um, uh, reviews and best of the worst of they do during the October month. That, um, those are those are always those yeah. are always solid episodes. Their John Carpenter one this year was fucking awesome. It was great, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it made me watch rewatch the other John Carpenter reviews. I haven't seen a lot of yeah. John Carpenter movies. <laughs> Yeah, it made me go. It made me finally go rewatch the Apocalypse trilogy because I'd I'd only ever seen the Thing, which is my top horror film ever, mm-hmm. and I'd never seen the other two in the trilogy. So I thought I'd check those out. Those are um. The, so what, the other two are um, Prince of Darkness and um. What the fuck is the last one? Oh, in the Mouth of Madness. Oh yeah, yeah, Samuel. Yeah. Of the yeah the of of those, I mean of the three, the Thing is obviously the best, and then um. Uh, Prince of Dark or um, uh, In the Mouth of Madness is probably the next best, and then um, the last the, the and then Prince of Darkness is probably the weakest by a pretty wide margin. Mm-hmm. But I kind of see what he's trying to do. Those movies are pretty good. I, I feel like they're. Um, I'm gonna proselytize on horror movies for two seconds. Go for then, it. I, I might I'm, jump into my rant on the other movie topic I want to talk about today, but uh, and I'll switch on that. But oh ahead. yeah, oh yeah, but but, but um. You know, rewatching, um, rewatching specifically those three movies, I think is very. Um, it's, it, I feel like it's very prescient about like the state of the world right now, uh, because specifically they're sort of about uh, paranoia and uh, you know paranoia and fear, kind of like turning humans into into like something monstrous, where it's like you, we, it's like humans encounter some kind of like weird alien threat or something they don't understand. Yeah. And those are the best. I, I agree. Yeah. And that contact kind of like turns people into monsters. And so literally, so literally it happens in the thing. And then what's interesting about Prince of darkness is that the sort of alien contact, um, you know, they, they run into the, you know, this canister full of like an alien being that's basically Satan. That's like in the basement of this old church. Um, there's actually not any, Except for maybe well, there's a right right in the end there's a little bit of body horror, but for the most part, um, there's like no body horror, and it's just sort of a you know the people the people are getting mind controlled by this by this like evil canister in the basement basically, and so I think um, thematically it's interesting because it juxtaposes like the thing where it's like really obvious and in your face right where it's like oh the humans are turning into monsters, and then the uh, uh, in Prince of Darkness, I think I suspect it's probably on purpose where it's like really restrained and like pulled back. And so it's like the the monsters, they remain human, even though they've had contact, you know, with it. So, you know, he's, he's sort of presenting us with, oh, the the, you know, it, you know, it, it's sort of obscured of like whether or not they're, you know, they're mind controlled or not. It's like they look totally normal and they pop off and, tr- and, and, and just try to kill you out of nowhere, but they still look completely human. Mm-hmm. And I think In the Mouth of Madness actually synthesizes both of those like really well uh, because that one, oh, specifically because they talk about how the the writer in that one, Sutter Kane, how his novels are sort of dissolving the reality between like fiction and nonfiction. And so it's it's this crisis of sort of uh, truth and information breaking down that precipitates that 
that uh, sort of apocalyptic sense of like paranoia and stuff. Yeah. And it's sort of like when people reach that peak despair in uh, in the mouth of madness where like reality has dissolved. It's like then they kind of turn into these like twisted like David Cronenberg monsters, <laughs> you know. And so I think I, I, I thought that was a very excellent metaphor for because uh, it's about like meme contagion. You know, it's like everyone's reading this this book that's like written by like H.P. Lovecraft demons and they're going fucking crazy. And uh, so just like the themes of like contagion and then um, like social contagion, too, I thought were, were very relevant. So um, as like a horror, it's not a literal trilogy, but as a conceptual trilogy, I think watching all of those like back to back is like a good uh, that's a good Halloween experience for this year. <laughs> All right, I'll shut the fuck up, Steve. Well, okay, so no, it's good. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I was going to talk about the Grateful Dead. We'll, we'll do that in a minute because I went and saw the show last night. Oh hell so, yeah! We're recording this on a Saturday. I saw it on Friday. It'll come out Halloween tomorrow. But I, I, um, because we're talking about movies and horror movies, and I was thinking about this for a minute. I have a hard time watching like violence on television. Mm-hmm. violence on, on movies and i didn't think i'd have a problem with that unless it's like campy oh yeah yeah right but um i i have a tendency to overthink these things um so i usually when i watch especially if you're watching specific people bite it um and that's the problem i have with horror movies as far as like the 10 little indian or 10 little i don't know indians or whatever the appropriate term is now um um uh where it's where it's uh you're seeing people just like, oh, that seems like a nice normal person, or so and so, and they're just like, oh, that horribly. that's horrible, like horribly murdered, like, <laughs> and like possibly very gruesome ways, or just like, and of course, uh, and then I, I realized that you know, and I recently two three weeks ago I saw uh, No Time to Die, the new James Bond film, yep. uh, yeah, and I thought it was okay. Um, I think. If there's spoilers at this point, I I don't think and the problem I have with it was a couple. There's I I think about Bond movies, and this is where I'm going to transition into Bond movies. Because yeah, that, that made me watch every time I watch the new ones, and I have no problem with Daniel Craig, except for the fact that I just want to watch Sean Connery. I want to watch yeah. 60s I, and even I, Roger I, even Roger Moore. I like I, I first ones I ever watched were Roger Moore movies, and then went back to Connery, up to Brosnan, then the Dalton ones. Um, James. I, problematic fave for me absolutely 100 percent. because I, I grew up with like watching the movies it's like yeah we it's like we know he's like a he, he's like a he's like a white supremacist like like not, sex- i don't think he is i'll get into subtext we can get into it subtextually okay. there's problems he's got we can agree he's got problems he's got pr- he's got some problems but i would i would argue he's um if you read the books, they oh read god, yeah, I'm sure the books. Yeah, I can't. Okay, read yeah. a lot more as like white nationalist fairy tales. <laughs> yeah, okay. That would make I, sense. Well, I mean, he's 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 preserving the empire, right? That's the whole. Yeah, point. He's yeah. All right, it's so like, it's not like explicitly like he's like oh fuck black people or whatever, but it's like yeah, but it's like you, start, you read them and you realize like. Wait, what was Doctor No's crime? It's like he just took a bunch of like Caribbean black people and like a bunch of Chinese people and decided to make their own rogue ethno state. And it's like, what was the crime there? He's working for <laughs> the fact that he's working for a global terrorist network. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was a part. Of, the yeah, biggest that's... problem was that he was he was <laughs> there, really... the whole the whole plot is basically of Spectre. Is, yeah, is you're, you're start... putting. You're you're creating a um, you're you're making the world powers fight each other for a new power to show up, and it turns out like in you only live twice, it's it's implied it's the Chinese. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that Blowfield is like you know. Uh, I forgot about that. That it's like actually with... like it's like funding Smirsh. I didn't I, I didn't remember that. I love you only live twice though. That's a good, that's a great one. Yeah, yeah. And that was I was thinking about this where I. Um, and I'll go in my well, horror thing was like, I, I watch Bond movies all the time and I watch people just die all the time. It's like boring that. It's like, it's like watching a, like a GI Joe cartoon, you know, that's uh, like, <laughs> but even, even like, even like, like, like women, like, or, or the Bond girls, like it's usually one, one good one, one bad one. Uh, and then case an, or, oh. or two good ones and one dies. 
it it, it, it fluctuates. Like you only live twice. So you have like three of them. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, and one one um, one's bad dies. One's good dies. Um, and and um, or even you have like a, a thunderball, which might be the for me that might be classic Connery. That's like the midpoint. Yeah, yeah. Where you got all the uh, uh, all the Austin Powers knockoffs coming, all the Connery movies, which are great. <laughs> but oh, um, I can I can, yeah. watch, I can watch those movies all day. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, they, they make marathons. They, I mean, we watched all of them. I'm sure you watched like a dozen marathons on like oh, yeah. AMC. That, that, I, I assume that's why around the holiday season, like like yeah. uh, starting around Halloween, it's like I watch. I, try, I usually try to watch a couple because when I was yeah when. When I was a kid and TV still existed, they would they would basically there would be like two or three fucking channels just like marathoning all the James Bond movies. Yeah. So I associate them with being like home for the holidays and like home for Christmas and shit. So I have I have very I, I, I'm very fond of them. <laughs> I'm also I'm also convinced I told Eric this and he kind of chuckled because it was sort of a delusional statement. But I I think they hit me at an impress- impressionable period. Mm-hmm. Um where I would pick up some certain things that I wanted to, because of course the whole idea of like like James Bond, Sean Connery, and not the just the movies, not the books aside. The books are their own entity because what the movies did were basically cherry pick stories from the books, and they get kind yeah, of messy yeah. really quickly. They, um, they weird sci fi elements like for yeah, the right uh, uh, the. But like say Sean Connery's James Bond, like the first scene you ever see him at the Le Cirque Club, which is the same one the Beatles showed up in Hard Day's Night. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> it's the Cirque Club, um, um, and they have the Sylvia Trench meets you know, Bond, uh, Trench Sylvia Trench Bond James Bond. And that first cut to him with a cigarette and I'm just like, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> like the just it's, ah. So I mean, if, if I sound like a I might have to cut that out. That sounded really fanboyish, but like <laughs> it, it was, it was like, like, like you're like, that is awesome. Like that is great. Yeah. That is just a cigarette. Like, yeah, the, the he's the ultimate playboy, but he's also like, he's also if you if you watch all those movies like in a row, or at least like not, I, I skip the action scenes because I don't really care about those. You listen to the dialogue. And you listen. You get these tropes and these seg- and these repeat themselves and things like Universal mm-hmm. exports. Um, uh, uh, but. They, and you'll have a scene where M says, what do you know about X? Mm-hmm. And then, like, Bond will go, not much, and then explain, like, everything you need to know, to, like, <laughs> briefing him on the subject. Like, oh, this is how this all works. The solar radio, like, like, in the, like not much. But he knows, knows everything. <laughs> he's like an intellectual, like, he's like, he's like the, the he's like a sort of a renaissance man style. Like, he just... He knows, like, yeah, cool as fuck. That's why people cool like him. Cool as fuck. That's, that's awesome. the part. Yeah, he's 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 cult, and that, that's where I go on this side of he's far more cultured than maybe the books imply, or maybe we like to admit today. Where he's like, yeah, not that he's. I mean, like, there's no, uh, there's there's not really a racist element to him, uh, as far as like ethnic races, except, except for that part where he just uh, except the part in you only live twice where he yellow faces himself. To look more Asian to hide from, uh, <laughs> to hide from. I, I uh, thought about that for a minute there, but was that his idea? I forgot exactly. about that. I thought that wasn't his he idea. Didn't, he didn't say no. He didn't go. <laughs> oh, Aaron, wait a minute. We have to consider how they. We have to. We have to consider how other people are going to feel about this. Like when they find out that they that uh, we've been yellow facing our spies, I think everyone's going to be quite upset. But, all right, all right. Take the sixties and seventies though, right? <laughs> Where you know, like you don't or, see, or live in like. Been the whole time just killing black people, but <laughs> uh, there's yeah, no, that's it's true. interracial, there's oh, interracial of, love in there too. One, I mean, the only problem with like the only, I think one of the few problems, like yeah, that was like, what I like about that. Live and Let Die is it does count as a black exploitation movie in the genre. If you look down like lists of black exploitation movies, Live and Let Die is in the list. Yeah, that's true. They should have just you know what they should have done is they should have taken Live and Let Die and just put fucking um, Richard Roundtree in it or something, and it just made it like another Shaft movie. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's it, it's in Harlem. I was gonna say, doesn't it happen, or doesn't some of it happen in Jamaica? I don't know. She's some kind of fucking. It's, it filmed in Jamaica, but it's on like it's it's a it's a fictitious um, Caribbean island. Okay, okay. Um, and and I think you know that was basically uh, pop. It was they're selling, they're making poppy and heroin. Or, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It's about breaking up like the Harlem drug trade. 
but there's a there they have two they have a they have a uh, club called like the Soul Food, whatever Soul Kitchen or Soul Food thing, where they're all they're all fronts, and he keeps getting he keeps getting duped by like by by the uh, the the henchmen in the movie. So it's not like you know the it's not like the the um it's not like dumb henchmen. You know what I mean? They keep he's yeah, kind yeah. of he's kind of like being played every time. Yeah, that's you know. true. The, the Bond villains are always very, are always you know, gener- generally quite competent until um, Act Three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's like, like every plan goes exactly as planned. Well, there's a scene in, in *Live and Let Die* where they have uh, he goes into the Harlem. Uh, I think it's called the Soul. It's like the Soul it's the Soul Food uh, Club, and mm-hmm. he sits in a booth. And the booth revolves into a trap door, takes him into the next scene where they're, you know, the off the, the office where he's being interrogated by mm-hmm. the dude with the dude with a, a, a claw for a arm. But the, you can see you can clearly see the extension of the of the arm. So it's it's got this extended arm where you can see his arm is actually moving the claw. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> it was pre Jaws. Um, and then he and then he, so he goes to New Orleans with uh, Felix Slider, I think, and he goes in there and. He goes. Let's take. Let's take uh, a. Uh, a like, let me get you your booth. Like, no, no, no. We'll we'll take a seat. We'll take a. Uh, we'll take the. Uh, we'll take one of the the club club tables by the by the stage. Thank you. It's because we we learned our lesson from the first time, yeah. and then the next time goes trap doors all the way to, <laughs> takes him <them> down. <laughs> so it's like it didn't even work. It didn't even. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. So it was one. Of, that's one of the few times I think. Fucking, it, it fucking yeah. These stupid fucking honkies. <laughs> So, I see, you know, to be fair, I haven't I haven't rewatched Live and Let Die in a really long time. <laughs> I, yeah, and I, I'm I'm kind of fresh on rewatching all of them, so getting all the vibes from each one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, the only one I really don't like is if you do a kill where like Bond looks he, like where Roger Moore's like 58, and he oh, looks 58. Alton and one, it's I thought really, uh, like uh, Moore was like three years older. No, was Connery three years old? No, yeah, Moore was three year old. I think three years older than Connery was. Damn. <laughs> so, you know, you have to, like, because you can't, like, I started to realize, like, James Bond could be in his 40s, and he'd be okay, because he's got to be kind of cultured and, like, you know, accumulate all this yeah, information yeah. over the years. Um, But anyway, it was like a, watching those movies was just, wasn't well, they're great. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Sean Connery. And, like, I looked at the, I was rereading that, that the, the new director said that Connery was essentially a rapist. In, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Thunderball, and I'm and I'm referring. I to think the Roger Moore doing. is more fucked up. Roger Moore is like way more fucked up. Like, um, fucking. Do you remember Man with a Golden Gun? I when think he's I know where you're going like, with this. yeah, where he's like, he has sex with Maude Adams middle while, of like, fucking someone, and then like throws her in a fucking closet, and then like keeps her, and, like fucks uh-huh. someone else like all night, and like just keeps his other hoe in the hilarious. closet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that like. Some of the stuff that people like like put on the Sean Connery movies, I'm like, I don't know, man. Those like those Roger Moore ones go fucking ape Ro- shit. Those are <laughs> the Roger Moore ones are, are are sillier. The other ones are the first the Connery five Connery movies are silly too. But like in terms of like the effects they tried to pull off, like you watch the ending of Thunderball with the boat, and you can yeah. see the, like see the background of the <laughs> cycling through, and you're like, it looks so cheap. But you know, <laughs> just do what you can. Uh, and Goldfinger's the, is probably Goldfinger's probably like the gold standard for for those old ones. I feel like that's like the perfect Sean Connery it's, one. It's the yeah, as far as like investigation or, or even like I, I had to rewatch what the plot was five times like to figure out yes. what it actually was. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, they're robbing the bank, but they're gonna blow it up, and they're gonna, they realize, oh, it's a radio. They're gonna, they're gonna devalue. They're not trying to rob it. They're trying to devalue all the gold, and so his gold stock goes up. It's so like simple, but it's like. It took me forever to figure out how that all worked out. Or yeah, it's fucking insane. Like it's like, <laughs> like his yeah. plan is fucking. It's like so brilliant. I, I, that I it's only. Like, it's like so fucking simple, but it's like that is literally insane. I only wish it was like specter oriented because that would be kind of yeah, cool. true. Like I think the ones they did in these new movies, and the one reason I can't dig on like Establo. Oh, uh, uh, and I, I I like Skyfall and I like Casino Royale. Those are the two like best Craig movies, right? Mm-hmm. This new one, I think, is like it's weirder because it's okay. Like, <laughs> like for me, it's weirder because it's like, oh, uh, he's he's you're, you're you're seeing the character you've known for fifty years, mm-hmm. sixty years, 
into a in like less of a playboy role and more of a of course con- I think I think the whole idea with uh, Craig was like he's taking out he's he's ditching the playboy thing. Yeah, I think that they're trying to go more a little more like character focused. Like they're trying yeah. to give him like a little more. Yeah, that's that's fine. I could do that. Um, yeah, but and it's harder to pull the Playboy thing off now just because of like modern. Um, yeah, people things. people don't like that shit. People don't like it as much anymore. It's like not like a. It, it, it's like like that archetype. That that archetype is not like a sex symbol now. You know, it's like it's like yeah. different. And I almost would say it's now countercultural, and not necessarily. A, bad way when james bond comes back he's got to be like one of the dudes with like the top knot and like the long ass beard and like a he's got to he's got to be able to know a lot about like coffee and like like craft beer he probably does know a lot about coffee that's the thing is you could be that guy gamble <laughs> like play play uh baccarat know about he knows all about champagne knows all about Kanye. he does like know all he knows all the uh spirits you know he's like you prefer this you know the you know whatever he knows about gold he knows about everything you need to know right yeah, yeah. It's the coolest thing is this is is actually like wealth of information in his brain. Mm-hmm. On top of the fact that he's just like very confident in in um in in um sort of flirting cuz we're 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 in that sort of like I won't say there's there's a war against I'm not going to red I'm not I will not stand with red pillars at all. Yeah. <laughs> but I do appreciate the idea that you could have a like a confident masculinity. To yeah, you yourself. get a positive masculinity. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And, and like you could you could it's okay to, you know, like uh, yeah, you have like a, you have like positive tough guy masculinity, yeah. like role models. Totally fine. I, I think even the Craig stuff made it kind of cooler. Where like yeah, James Bond may have experimented uh, s- switch mm-hmm. hitting at one point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he's totally cool with it. Like, ugh. like that's that, you know, that think- mess. That's the, exactly what it would be because he'd like you wouldn't. You know. Yeah, true. I mean, as, as a spy, you'd probably you know you would probably have to realistically go like you know you go go in, go yellow in face. <laughs> Yeah, go yeah, go yellow face. Do what you need to do. <laughs> do what you need to do. Yeah, if you you need to be like the uh, uh, you you need to be like the like the gay Asian Asian twink for for some uh, for some like terrorist organization leader who's like really into that. Like you got to step up to the it, fucking yeah. plate, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I want to see I want to see the movies. It's like all the all the missions where it's like. Or it's like James Bond is like, yeah, I wasn't proud of that one, but I had to do it for my country. And he's just sucking cock with this fucking, just taking it from some dude, some fat fucking like Libyan dictator. And he just like turns around with a gun, and just like blows the guy's head off. <laughs> uh, what <are> you... <laughs> uh, yeah. I... <laughs> it's it's like, do you expect me to come? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing about that, too, is I, I love the tropes uh, that are like um, that they have in these movies. Like by, by the time the more like even in, by the time you, you binge the more movies, you kind of get to know the so the KGB had the KGB pretty well and know that mm. he's like a reasonable dude. <laughs> he's not he's not some sort of like like marxist like like uh crazy person that must destroy the west they're just like so, he's like a self-preservation guy yeah yeah so when you keep seeing him in these movies he's always like combating whatever the villain is right because the villain's never like a russian dude or, yeah the villains are always like, like are, are like weird like uh they're hero. like weird like like third party like like a i don't say apolitical but like weird like neo-political movements that like that yeah. like radically threaten status quo power structures. <laughs> right. Right. Well, yeah. Was... Like that, that's the James Bond villain. It's like the guy who's like, yeah, I'm not a fucking, I'm not towing communist or fucking like, like Western democracy party lines. The fact that it's a British agent and not an American, because all the Americans are kind of treated like, um, Felix Lauder gets his fucking ass kicked in the books. He gets fucked up. It's really funny because I always notice that like Felix Leiter is like three steps behind every the entire plot. Yeah, <laughs> every time he's yeah. your, he's your ally. He's gonna be he's gonna go to battle with you, but he's always behind like whatever's going on. And it's no it's it's, it's more no more apparent than Goldfinger, or they keep like, losing like, track. Like or like, oh, books, he's doing fine. Like three by three or four books into the fucking uh like into like the James Bond like book series like the Ian Fleming ones. Like Felix Leader has like a hook hand and like an eye patch, and he's like just on fucking desk duty because it's like 
You can't be a fucking secret agent with like a hook hand and an eye patch. <laughs> uh, like he gets fucked up. It's hilarious. Which is like the that's the uh, that's the the thing in um, uh, which is always you know, he he has a, a, a yeah he's, he's he's like the ultimate near do well. Yeah, in yeah, and yeah. Like, even in like uh, the only time he's not a near do well, he gets mauled by bad guys in uh, which caused the sets the plot up for um license to kill the second dalton one okay okay which is cool because it takes place at the hemingway house there's a scene in the hemingway house i'm like oh shit i've been there that's great oh fuck yeah like farewell (laughs) to arms because he's the whole idea is he he quits the mi6 to go on this vendetta Mm -hmm. um which is like a better story than it is a bond movie yeah yeah (laughs) but um, you know i haven't seen either of the timothy dalton i mean i've seen bits and pieces of them they're i've never i think i've sat through i yeah, that's what I hear. I hear that they're, they're, they're still fine. They're closer to the Craig movies. Yeah. Or, or I, Brosnan's closer to Connery, and Moore is kind of his own thing. You I, know, with one, this new movie coming out, I realized that I the last fucking new James Bond movie I saw was fucking, I think, Quantum of Solace. Like, <laughs> that's how far behind I am. I'm well, like... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a spoiler for you. Then this is what, yeah. I, what I don't like about... And I was really looking forward to Spectre, because I'm like... Uh-huh. Oh, I guess Christoph Waltz is a bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, maybe because he in the what the Skyfall did really well was bring back the kind of vibe of the '60s movies, where okay. you have okay. the Aston Martin makes a comeback. Um, although the Aston Martin's always there, but I think the 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 Aston the Goldfinger Aston Martin DB5 is there, like yes, and the, even like I'm not a, I think where I'm getting at here is the where I have nostalgia in like inside like. Scoop for people have that for Star Wars and Star Trek. I think I have it for James Bond movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I want, I want nostalgia boners. I want, I want Aston Martin DB5. I want Money Penny. <laughs> I want, I want um, the fucking M office with the, the with the cushy door with the kind of yeah, um, yeah, 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 with no, the upholstery told, I, door. I'm, you know what? I I am totally the same way. The James Bond fandom is dying. <laughs> I want, I want Walter <laughs> for PPK. <laughs> I want like obnoxious James Bond fans the way that like Doctor Who and like Supernatural have captured Tumblr. Yeah, I want, where's that? Where's that at? The only thing about that is like, and I think the, the closest that happened was like Goldeneye and sixty four had a bunch of characters from the other movies, and they kind of try to yeah, do that yeah, every yeah. once in a while. I don't like that as much because, uh, although I like it because I know the characters, I don't like it in the like if you have a Brosnan movie, you need the Brosnan villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, I think you you want James Bond as the consistent James Bond, MI6, Felix Slider, uh, Universal Exports. Uh, those are like Spectre. Those are the consistent elements to that that span the other movies. Mm-hmm. So when you have other things in there um, that like are random missions, for, for lack of a better word, like like um, the guy from that can't die and live and let die and odd job and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scaramanga is like a villain, and like you could you could play him in um, uh, uh, Goldeneye N sixty four. It's it's weird because it's like oh yeah. you could play all these games like it's fun because you could it sort of does introduce you back to the other movies like oh here's the Moonraker laser here's the gold. It's gunners. weird that they p- pretended that all of the movies are in the same canon. <laughs> like that's and, and most hilarious. most of them are with the exception of course, <laughs> uh, with the exception of uh, uh, the new ones. Yeah, 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 and it's gonna get weird after. I, if you haven't seen it, I will not spoil it for you. But it's gonna get weird after this. Yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. But so maybe we talk about that off air about. Oh yeah, sure. About that, <laughs> we can break that down. But I think um, I was gonna make a point. And I forgot. Oh, the new. Okay, so I won't tell you what happens in this new one. But the last one was Spectre, right? Mm-hmm. Spectre. Um, and and you get this this whole um. And the fact that they're ripping off Austin Powers, you find out really quickly that they're ripping off an Austin Powers <laughs> plotline. <laughs> it's it's so funny to me how like Austin Powers has basically just become. It's basically just become like actual spy movie canon. <laughs> At this so, point, like it's, it's, yeah. it's like, <laughs> and this is where it gets. This is where I, I found it. Like it finally gets kind of dumb. Uh, like and, okay, okay, and like and like. <laughs> You can not, you can get away with dumb camp stuff in Bond movies, right? Oh, let's, oh, like mm-hmm. oh hell, let's just do what we always do: hijack some nuclear warheads and hold the world hostage. Hmm? You know, right? Um, most of the plot lines are about that, or like with the some like 
Hugo Drax eugenics experiment, which is that was kind of dumb too. But the the um, um, uh, the fact that you had um, or or uh, or uh, what's his face, um, Christopher Walken wants to like destroy Silicon Valley. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I fucking forgot. I mean, honestly, same though. He was totally correct. <laughs> yeah, we should have let him. We should have wrong about it. that. Yeah. Although, although it, you sound, it sounds like a good like overall like con- concept to do. Knowing what we know now, but it probably was you know some sort. It, it ends up being some sort of like elaborate bank robbery. Or yeah, he, yeah. He's making more money because he's he making can destroy more money from, from, de- from destroying gold like, finger, up you know, Steve jobs. Yeah. And gold, Goldeneye was a bank robbery, an overly yeah, elaborate yeah. bank robbery. Um, but but um, this new one or the Spectre movies like left off where it's like you finally he, they bring back uh, Ernest Stavro Blofield. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, and you get the cat cool yeah fuck and, yeah but the problem is they bring up this point because he's like all these all these other villains in the craig movies are building up they're all under this secret wing which i thought yeah. was like they had the solace division that was the whole point of solace was like another secret terrorist organization that's bigger than what we know and they're everywhere and how do we know not know about this no they're all working for this guy they almost feels like they retrofitted that into a storyline oh okay, where okay it's like everybody from vespa lynn to uh, to um, the um, rogue agent from uh, Skyfall that was um, the, the Spanish guy. I can't remember his name. Anyway, Didn't see it. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, good movie, though. That's that's a good one. The point okay. is, um, it all leads to, oh, I am, it's like Blowfield's running like this, like, uh, ultra uh, uh, surveillance company kind of thing that's requiring, and he's establishing, like, global control by having this unified like nato esque uh, surveillance um, his fucking division mark zuckerberg <laughs> kind of mark zuckerberg you say. but the thing is here's here's like it's all very elaborate and it doesn't require some sort of weird ass vengeance plot for blowfield right because uh-huh. he bring and what ends up happening is they bring up the whole idea like oh yeah by the way james uh you're my half brother. He explains like how he's his half brother. I'm like, uh, what the no, fuck? No, 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 so no, no, no. <laughs> that is the that is the ending. Of, that's hilarious. That's the oh ending of Goldmember. Yeah, yeah, what the fuck? Austin Powers Goldmember is it uh, that I'm Michael Caine? <laughs> Michael Michael Caine is yeah. is also the father of Austin Powers and Doctor Evil. That's yeah, literally that's like fuck? you can't do that <laughs> and that's get away so with it. Funny. Oh my god! Yeah, you're you're totally right. They're, they're, they're just making Austin Powers like more and more canon. <laughs> I'm like, no way, because like, that's that's can't that that's you could get away with in a silly movie like that where it's oh we could write our way, write ourselves out of making Doctor Evil so evil because it's such a likable character. Um, this is like. Why? Why were you? This is a very <laughs> over elaborate pro. This is a very over elaborate elaborate it's like setup. We didn't need to like it, to it, go it's after like we... your half brother who was more preferred than you know who was like your adopted half brother that was you know. They should. Do you know what they should do? If they're gonna go fucking that ape shit, they should just make a whole like a series of movies about Blofeld doing his own fucking spy shit. And then I want to know how he got. Off- he, it's this, it's the ultimate like uh, plot hole of like where did they get all the money for all these elaborate like setups to pay all the pay all the people want, to yeah, destroy I the world. See Blofeld like scheming his way to the top, and then every once in a while he pulls like an old photo out of his wallet that's just like him and Daniel Craig when they were like five, and he's just like looking at it like tearfully, and he's like one day. <laughs> that, I want that, that was kind of brought up in the movie too. Nah! Not, no job. joke, no joke. And so, it's, oh my god, it's like wow. It's just, and, you know, and I think about like and I rewatched because um, that was also made me got to go back and watch the Lazenby movie mm-hmm. because that's the closest to like because I, I, I always skip Lazenby because I just I don't it just he never quite fit with me. Um, um, as far as like that's yeah, he only did one movie and the movie itself is like kind of weird actually. Everybody says it's the best one and I. I can't agree with it i mean it's it's the one where it's 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 like the one where like they finally try to humanize james bond a little bit and give him a fucking real yeah, wife and girlfriend they, and 
but it was if you I'm watching that movie, it was basically a rival criminal organization's head wants is offering a dowry to James Bond to marry his daughter. <laughs> and court court and marry his daughter. Oh my god. And I'm like that's bizarre like as far as cuz it's like yeah it, it, it was cuz it was not Spectre it was like a lesser version of of mm-hmm. some sort of crime family or whatever. And the plot is like the plot is also kind of just as kitschy cuz it's 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 closer to like a, a Matt Helm movie yeah. as far as like <laughs> Blowfield's plan to have like a harem of like agents to kind of like infiltrate Mm -hmm. nato and do like (laughs) i think it was like to mess up the it was like biogenetic ruin the crops and the nato crops or something somewhere like like, like it's a head scratcher you're like (laughs) it's like i guess (laughs) but they they bring in like you know all the time in the world the you know they they bring all those other elements so when you when you watch like the more movies and you have like you have like um, Diamonds Are Forever that comes after that, where you he opens with like um, uh, Connery coming back and like yeah, yeah. trying to hunt down Blowfield for the Avengers. You don't feel like with with Connery. I never feel like the loss of his wife, mainly because yeah, that yeah. Connery character is still in a playboy sensibility, where he's just like, I, I'm a single guy. I have a, I, I can't commit to anything because I have I'm a fucking agent. You know. Yeah, yeah. On top of just like you know. Yeah, that the, the his style, more more kind of has a slightly less um. Like in 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 it's brought up a couple different times. Even in the Dalton one, he was you know they, they, they the, the, the there's a wedding. Felix Leiter gets married. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it is it is the like the night of the wedding. You know, like uh, before they can ever consummate their marriage, uh, the bad guys to get vengeance and they they basically kill his wife and then like jesus ma- they maim him he's basically oh my like god as far as the hemingway theme is concerned yeah. like he's basically he's maimed in the parts you don't want to be maimed um <laughs> and, fucking and, felix god damn I, I need to go the, rewatch I, I need to go like rewatch all of these uh, pluto, it's been a hot minute pluto.tv has almost all of those with if you don't mind the commercials it's all my free. Uh, hard drive full of pirated movies also has all of this. <laughs> I used to, we still have, and this is one of those things where I was so in these movies, I'd buy all the, like my, my folks would buy the collections on the DVD. They were like three sets. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. And, um, so by anyway. the way, oh yeah, I was Go gonna ahead. say, have you ever seen the, uh, um, cause then he's brought the Matt Helm movies, but have you ever seen the, um, uh, the Man spy Flint? movies with, uh, Michael Caine? Like there was like a trilogy of spy movies. Oh, he was in. um, fucking, the Ipcrest file was, I think, the first one, or maybe the second one. I, I, I should watch him because I'm I, I, I I'm down. To, you I, would love it. Yeah, I need a, like a Italian it, it, it job. It kind of and... deconstructs like the like the sort of like James Bond like superhero agent. Like the first mm-hmm. movie is um, uh, it's not Matt Helm. What the fuck is the name of his fucking character? It's gonna drive me fucking crazy. It's something that's like Matt Helm. Uh, it's like Matt or Mike or something like that. They're always supposed to be like some sort of simpleton name. I think Fleming always want Fleming idealized the idea of it's like yeah, a, like a short and generic nobody name, like a Brian. Like the yeah, way the way yeah. Monty Python came up with Brian as like yeah. the most <laughs> morning Brian. But, Let uh, me look. At, hold on, I'm gonna look at. But anyway, basically, um, ba- basically, it's it's like um. Uh, like, like you get to see, like, he's still like kind of like a dashing, like, you know, he's like really into like cooking and like high culture and stuff, Mm -hmm. but he works at like an extremely realistic spy agency where it's like, he's doing like a lot of just like paperwork and shit. And like, it's like very much like, yeah, man, like, so uh, every week you get to write about, write a report of like what the fuck you're doing. So uh, Harry, Harry Palmer. (laughs) <laughs> the Harry, Harry Palmer. Palmer. Okay, that's closer. That's probably closer to what like Clancy's Jack Ryan character was, where he's like a CIA like desk guy, like gets put in these like over elaborate hostile situations. Even though he was like military trained, yeah, yeah, he was like a, he had like he had like a military background, so he could handle himself. Like it wasn't so he's like he's like out of his element. Like oh yeah, he can handle a high tense situation like a Red October or a but or a or a. Um, 
Patriot Games sort of situation, but he was always kind of like the main job was being at Langley or wherever the uh, yeah, yeah. CIA place is just like crunching numbers and like finding out like, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, it, like it gets like, a, like the, I mean, it gets pretty, you know, like psychedelic spy movie. Cause like the Ipcrest file is like, you know, he's slowly uncovering this sort of like weird brainwashing. It's like kidnapping and like brainwashing plot, uh-huh. but it's like you, you, you get to see more of like a, you know, you get to see more of like a realistic, depiction of like government like espionage but then the, the next couple of movies kind of the, the next one and then like the the third one both kind of become a little more you know a little, little more crazy little playing uh uh playing keep up with um with like the james bond movies you know okay but overall um you should uh if you're if you're feeling like uh if you're if if you need that if you, if you need that like nostalgia shit and you want something like fresh like definitely like give those a watch like those okay. those are pretty good. Right on. I think um, um, there was like, I, I, I did notice in the in the in the Quantum of Solace movie because I hadn't seen some of those it was something I hadn't seen since those happened and there's something I haven't seen at all like I hadn't seen Majesty Her Majesty's Secret Service and I hadn't seen Die Another Day. Um, oh yeah, yeah, and both those movies are actually Die Another Day is pretty silly. <laughs> pretty, talk about yeah, talking about, talk about that's uh, how I feel about like Man with a Golden Gun, where I'm like, this is like this is like peak man. goofy. <laughs> or like this is like a this is like a, like a Saturday morning cartoon. Like, know, I feel like I'm third, watching like the new adventures yeah. of James Bond. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy with the third nipple and the the yeah, it's like what the fuck? It's like no they're really like they're they're really stretching for, for like, how are we going to make this guy cool? It's like, give him a bunch of extra nipples. And also he's got like a, he lives in a carnival fun house. <laughs> in like the South China Sea somewhere. Yeah. yeah he built it. Also ties, fun. it ties into his energy. Uh, I love how it ties into his energy plan. Like, like immediately. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's so fucking the weird. Inter- the previous level, he was being reassigned, and they're always trying to send him to Istanbul for some reason. Like, yeah, I, what I, the fuck? You start like start noticing these tropes and trips, and like the fact that like I can that I can now pull um, like different recurring themes and or other spy movie things. For example, um, uh, I don't know if like in Matt Helm movies, there's always a scene where he's like doing like a coy jo- a coy jab at Frank Sinatra. Uh-huh. Uh, because he's like you, you know, he's you, you know, it's like Steen Martin, yeah, it's Steen fucking, Martin. Yeah. You can't, he's yeah. not not <laughs> Steen Dean Martin, right? So, uh, there's a point where he's like driving a car, and um, uh, God, I don't know if who it was. It was a Frank Sinatra song. Turns on, turns on. It's like ah, not this, no, no, no. And then it goes into like, <laughs> and then it fl- he flips the channel, and the next radio station is like. You're nobody till somebody loves you. You know, like, this is <laughs> yeah. much better, much better. You know, <laughs> and and like I'm watching Quantum of Solace, and he's driving around in this car in a chase scene, and a Frank Sinatra <laughs> turns on, song turns on like automatically. That is such a and, weird deep cut. And he's like, what the fuck? And he's like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> and it's, oh my and it's, god, <laughs> I, that's that is a deep cut that like. That is a really intensely have... weird deep cut spy movie joke. <laughs> that is fuck. I mean, like, I mean, I know, like the like the Matt Helm movies aren't like that, like unknown. But I'm like, I think if you ask people who fucking Matt Helm was, they would not fucking know. <laughs> no, I, I, they would go for like Arman Flint before they in James Coburn before they go with uh, Matt Helm. Jesus yeah, Christ! Was... I forgot about Arman Flint. Holy yeah. shit! That's the one they he name drops it in fucking Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It, yeah, that's the one. He it's like on TV. And he's like, "This is my favorite movie." Oh, <laughs> yeah. So you I, know, I was, I was, it was so weird. I'm, I was like literally having this conversation like not not a week ago, where I was like, you know, every you know every like Star Wars or whatever has its like or you know every every Star Trek will have its like shitty. Yeah, you know, we'll have like a shitty like number two. Like every franchise or, or like genre thing will have like a fucking like number two genre that's like, oh, like oh. The, the Pepsi to the Coke. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I was like trying to think of like you know, I'm I'm like, what is the fucking like what is the Pepsi to like the James Bond Coke? You know, I was like trying to like well, suss it out. 
there's there hasn't, a lot. I, I was like, I think it's like literally Austin Powers right right now. I don't know because like Austin but it's Powers, like, there's, there's, nothing... there's a reference to that because Austin, you can't get one without the other. Oh, you talking about like watersheds to like copy? Yeah, yeah. It, like there's well, not would... really like a uh, there's not really like a a a, 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 like a long running like competitor to like the like the. You can't movie. really do it because it, the genre oversaturated in the '60s. Yeah, that's true. I think I think when you only live twice came out, I think they had, or either one of the one of the one of the later like mid to late '60s James Bond movie came out. Come came out. It was like they said there was like sixty nine or seventy other spy movies that were released that year, same year. Wow, holy shit! <laughs> so you're getting hey, like new fucking. Those, New Lost Beat Six idea, uh, be for reviews of every fucking spy movie series. We could do that. We could just we could have a sub sub podcast and say we're gonna break down each Bond movie. But like, I don't know. No, we gotta watch like all the shitty like Italian yeah. like like spaghetti spy movies. Do you know about OK Connery? Have you heard of that? It's like okay, so it's this Italian movie where they get Sean Connery's brother to play not James Bond. And then, like, but like every other character in the movie is, it's like they got Bernard Lee, they got like uh, one of the well, Money Penny girls, Lo- Lois got, Maxwell. I think so. And they got the guy who plays Largo from fucking Thunderball, like yeah. he's playing the villain in the movie. So it's like they literally just get like the entire that- cast of like the the James Bond movies and Sean Connery's brother, and just make a not James Bond movie just with like everybody. It's like the most, it's like the most it's like, it's like kind of when they got, well, like when they got Ursula Undress to do like on Andres, I don't know, uh, Ursula Undress, um, to do uh casino Royale. It's yeah. Kind of yeah. Similar situation. I haven't yeah, seen yeah, that original one either. Yeah. It's yeah. It's like the, it's like the, the fucking, uh, uh, John Cleese fucking casino Royale movie. <laughs> I've always wanted to like double feature those like back to back just to be like, just to be like, I would just to be like, oh yeah, fake James Bond exploitation. They get, they get Desmond Lewin too, or That's, I, I, it's like a bunch of people, dude. Like we should, we should fucking watch that. That movie's fucking, <laughs> that movie's fucking hilarious. It just sounds hilarious. Like I couldn't believe it was real. Oh man. It was well, streaming on Amazon prime for a while. It was just like a, <laughs> it's like a free thing on Amazon prime. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, they, Amazon Prime has a bunch of the cool B movies. Like they, yeah, have, they, they have, have a, like the best one, sixties and seventies movies. Yeah. Like holy shit! Like they actually have like a lot of shit. It's one of those where they they had like you know like when you're looking for streaming services and like like yeah. each one like just to sell them on the stuff they have they like Amazon could afford to over like over buy and yeah saturate, they, they, so they have like saturate a massive your catalog library. with with all that stuff yeah yeah they just have like a huge library of like weird crap you've never heard of like it's fucking awesome yeah i and on just ending on that note i i think there's an argument to me and i was talking with talking with Corey the other day about the this this sort of like rewatch i was doing um and I, he's got a point where the, like and i, I kind of made it earlier where it's like there's a there's a level of counterculture-ness to a positive in a positive way. There's a counterculture that could be built off of like the James Bond uh, uh, character if you if you cherry pick the right things and ditch the wrong things. Yeah, beca- yeah, you can, yeah, get, you become the become the Sigma male, <laughs> the Sigma male fucking uh, British spy that you, you, know, were, you were always meant to be. <laughs> yeah. Just you know, you can learn to play. Just learn to be a s- suave gambler. To you know, you know, uh, uh, and uh, very very. As far as confidence is concerned, I'm like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah that's confidence true. Yeah. in brains. He's not, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. like a, he's not a, he's not some sort of meathead. And, and I was about to say that, so like, like I said, all the Americans are like, especially in this. This is my last point too. All the Americans in the in the movies are always played like in the '60s. They're played like gangsters. <laughs> like, like, kind of like, that, like I, dumb, I like dumb as how the CIA acts a lot like, of the like, time. Okay, so I, I swear, I, I swear to God, like, I, okay, the scene in in, in Goldmember, especially, especially not Goldmember, Goldfinger, <laughs> the scene in Goldfinger where, um, um, they have that meeting with all the all the criminals in the thing, uh, and they all and they all think they're getting ga- like they're they're poisoned to death, but like. You know, there's also a, a gas tank that makes you sleep, uh-huh. um, but he switched them out. Um, there's a, but there's a, there's just like a 
hey, what's the big idea? You know, and there's like this one where it's like, <laughs> it's like all right, Goldfinger, I think you're made part. I want my money now. I'm buying out. And of course, he goes, he's the one that gets crushed by the can. <laughs> and then someone goes, what's the matter, Solo? Too big for you to handle? You know, like, that's oh my kind of that, God. Like, it sounds like, you know, like, wow, these are like Americans. So, <laughs> I, it, yeah, I guess if, if, yeah, if you want to be like, if you really want to like sell, like, oh, what's an Amer- what's an easily identifiable American and accent? And they have that, like, they have that redneck Amer Burger in the Moore movie in, in both. Uh, uh, um, um, die another day. Uh, no, um, live and let die. Um, mm-hmm. and who was like he was? He was supposed to play the black exploitation cliche of the redneck racist cop because uh-huh. he's going, "Hey boy, looks like you were speeding today. Uh, you, you, yeah. you picked the wrong day to mess with J.R. Toby or whatever." Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then he shows up, and it's funny because he's like he shows up in the second in Man with a Golden Gun. Oh, um, that's the guy who's like chasing him with the stupid fucking flying airplane yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like, oh, you're that English secret agent from England. You know, like, <laughs> it's like, oh, and Roger Moore's like, oh, fuck, man, I'm with this guy again. Like, you know, uh, well, you know, good on this like weird country bumpkin American sheriff for recognizing good, this good. fucking. Like good recognizing on this English super spy twice. Well, well good on him for like finding himself in like culturally like uh, 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 expand like uh, open minded to actually travel to like Thailand in the first place. Yeah, like why are, why are they vacationing? Why are in they there? Thailand? Like I would never see think you know maybe I, maybe I'm maybe I'm projecting. Uh, uh, you know, Ameriburgers for like, you know, not wanting to leave America. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I don't what well, they must be doing something in, 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 uh, Bangkok. Cause that's what they were. That's where they were. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. but, those movies they, are great. Uh, James Bond movies are fucking, I love them. Fantastic. Everyone, everyone, everyone go watch them. Watch, do, watch, watch Dr. No, watch Rush Over Love, watch Goldfinger, watch Thunderball, watch, uh, you only file note. Twice. What's your favorite? What's your what, file note? What's your favorite oh, one? It depends on the actor. Okay. Uh, so I will say, um, I don't have a favorite Connery one. I would say, I, I, vibe wise, I like scenes most from. Uh, I liked. I like Domino, and I like the the uh, Thunderball. Yeah. Yeah. Gold, I, Goldfinger is like the classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, you know, and, and I like scenes from. Russia with love is, is also good as far as like a movie is concerned in the plot. Um, I'm going to go with, it's more like, what can I, what kits everything in the same kind of vibe? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, Thunderball is, I, I, I like a lot, but, um, with more, I, 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 he was my favorite for a long time. The first movie I ever saw was Octopussy. Um, I can't believe I thought that. I mean, like I, not knowing <laughs> the slang. This I, I was so naive. You're just to the like, slang yeah, when I was you're this. running around as an eight year old, like, yeah, octopussy. Yeah. Your parents was like, watch. don't say that. <laughs> they didn't know. Any, like, there's like, yeah, pussy galore. And you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my friend's like, do you know what that is? Like, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but then, uh, 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 but I'm gonna go with like the spy who loved me. Yeah, as far as that, the more, that's, that's the best theme song. That's the classic Moore movie. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. My favorite Moonraker. Um, that one's awesome. I love the music. I love um, how absolutely psycho bonkers crazy it goes at the end. Uh, it's basically just like Albert Broccoli goes like, "All the kids want to see Star Wars. We're putting Star Wars yeah. and James Bond." Um, that's my, that's my least um, favorite Bond villain though. He was just kind of an obnoxious asshole. I mean, so is so is so is Zorin as Christopher Walken. I mean, you can I, ignore also, Drax because like Jaws is in it, so it's like I, just just pretend Jaws is the main villain. I like how I, think he, if I, I had to pick Connery. I'd go. You only live twice. Okay, like that that's kind of my. And then the other ones, I mean, like uh, I I really like Gold. I really like Goldeneye for uh, Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, everything else everything else felt like, and I think the video game had a lot to do with that too. But absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, but the video, like the other games, or the other other films rather, were a little too like, a little too over the top, and a little too. Uh, I mean, not that they. I mean, their Bond movies are over the top, but like they they can go like yeah, they can go like cartoony. You know, they can, they I, they can yeah. go like yeah, it, like it, it, it. The pendulum swings back and forth between like sort of like gritty punching and realism to fucking yeah. like I, cartoon. 
I know Denise Richards get a lot of gets a lot of flack for being like a nuclear n- nuclear uh, 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 scientist or somewhat. Like, you know, it's like it, we, we just saw it in Starship Troopers, man. We can't, <laughs> we <just> can't <laughs> you know, the whole idea of Starship Troopers is these are all vapid, hollow people that like, you know, yeah, become yeah. become soulless um, Nazis by the end of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, not, like, but the the uh, uh, but a lot of they had a lot of scientists. <laughs> Or a lot of there's a lot of strong female um, Bond girls that mm-hmm. no one talks about, by the way. Um, they get even they, even they get seduced to his charms, but they but like you get like a pussy galore, you get a um, uh, good night, even though she got she got cucked in the in the movie, uh, um, <laughs> uh, which is still kind of it's almost wrong for me to laugh at the funny at the yes. <laughs> of that situation. But if you realize what's going down, you're like that poor lady, <laughs> poor girl. <laughs> But it's also Maude Adams. Maude Adams, strong character, Octopussy. Um, mm-hmm. She played two. She was also in The Man with the Golden Gun, but she gets offed. Um, Damn, we're going to do a whole other series. I know. We're gonna, just, I've taken so much time talking about Bond. we got to get to The Grateful Dead. Yeah, but, tell uh, me about uh, The Grateful Dead, bro. Um, <laughs> uh, they're in town this week. We're, we're all from L.A., so we're, we're they're, they're in town this week and just doing like a marathon fucking Halloween concert. So the whole squad yeah. has been the beefer, the 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 beefer universe the well, bu i would say is out here watching dead shows yeah yeah <laughs> which is funny because i don't think anybody i i think most of the beefers are not they actually don't like the grateful dead like it's a strong enough opinion that i actually respect it because it's yeah. <laughs> um where it's just like yeah i can tell totally you digging not not digging this and i i um uh, this is my first dead head ex- dead experience i'm not a dead head and i want to stand by i now officially stand by that because i don't identify with anybody else in this crowd with the exception yeah. of kyle <laughs> and kyle yeah. and i are just kind of standing there going like like standing straight everybody else is moving right yeah, yeah. swaying yeah, back tripping. and forth up and down right and left and kyle and i are like just standing straight and i'm i might have been ruined by like mixing live shows now uh or having doing live working in live concerts and on, on mm-hmm. a musical level where uh, I should I should start from the beginning, but like on on the level, look, I I you know, I uh, did not bring any drugs with me, but I did bring six beef and cheddar classics in the building with me. Um, That's just as good sometimes. Yeah, uh, you have to bring Arby's to the bowl. It, it started when we did. We went to see ELO, and we was like telephone line. And everybody had the beef, and we just got a shitload of Arby's, and that's our picnic for the bowl. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> um, so I'll start from the beginning. Um. We got there. I got there around four or five ish, and like I hear about Shakedown Street. So I, I like I, I was told about this with some friends that we're gonna go there. Um, and um, I, I've been to some of the, and I'm starting to realize I've actually kind of been to other places that have this vibe. I've that one. If you want to go to episode on the YouTube channel, this episode called Tale of Two Weekends, you'll hear my experience of dealing of, of working this festival called one love uh mm-hmm. in 2017 and it was sort of like a hellacious hellish like edm hippie thing that was like you know i couldn't get the smell of patchouli's off me for a week and um <laughs> it was sort of like it was it was a bet for me it was like a little too esoteric not esoteric but just sort of like the new age stuff is kind of like i can give or take um yeah <laughs> Mostly get, take, get or give. Uh, I don't know. I can never take not uh, anyway. So, uh, but you know, you walk down there, you get the experience. You want to get the gr- like. There's like the grilled cheese, the people selling food, people selling t-shirts, people selling. It's basically like that traveling economy that travels the band wherever they go. This has been going on since like the '80s, uh-huh. um, and apparently it was it got big in the '80s because the Reaganism period kind of like, you, like allowed a counterculture to re or re. re- it allowed the counterculture to kind of regrow itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, walking down and I had my, I had a buddy with me that I got a ticket for, for his birthday. And, um, so he was, he was all, oh, he was super happy. I'm just, this is kind of great. I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of digging it, digging it. I'm trying to open, you know, but there's just a lot of like strange, like, and this is one of those things where you build a whole, um, if you build a counterculture, <laughs> Uh, based on like a like beat like early beat nonconformity, and it uh-huh. turns into like 
a, a sub it, and i was talking i've talked with um on a podcast coming up i talked with De- uh grateful dead biographer dennis mcnally and oh, I was a talk- it was a talking point i had with him because i want he wrote a book on uh actually last time i was, I was actually hanging out with you i was reading a book on, on kerouac he wrote that book. oh yeah oh shit okay yeah. okay and uh uh so I, I was trying to find like, this is the whole element that I'm trying to find out my, my obsession with communities and, mm-hmm. and scenes. And, and if I could, you know, if I have the ability to, to create one or join, like, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, I go in there and it's, it's, it's just sort of, uh, I just don't quite have that same sort of, yeah, man, it's so, just great, you know. It's <laughs> like someone. I was having my. I had my cool Grateful Dead shirt on. It uh-huh. was uh, one that I got in Love on Hate, and that's you know it, the the Steal Your Face logo is just classic, man. It's, it's oh yeah, thing. totally. And I will say this: it's the most you know Halloween time is my Grateful Dead time. It's my sort of like a dedicate a couple days to it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. In general, because it's like skeletons and you know they're the world. They're like the band with the world's greatest graphic design. Totally yes. <laughs> Um, I will give them that. I, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm not exactly a huge deadhead either. Like, there's a couple, like Blues for All, I think is awesome. And I like yeah. Terrapin Station. Uh-huh. And those are both nothing like the rest of their discography. <laughs> <laughs> I always find, like, Blues for All, like, the recording, the production is weak tea compared to Terrapin, but um, it's good music. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually really do like the rec- studio recordings more than people like. I, I, I like the stuff they don't even like. I like. Um, uh, I like the first album a lot. It's got that oh, 60s nice. kind of <laughs> kitsch to it, but it's yeah, still yeah. like, like there's a level of like they're trying to jam on a tune and Jerry's guitar is like a little obnoxious. And, you know, I like Live Dead. Live Dead is great. Um, mm-hmm. um, the first Live Dead, like the 69 one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Working Man's Dead is awesome. Uh, there's anytime they have actually have songs and like s- yeah. well made songs, they're really fucking good. They're really um, good songwriters. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's the, it's like I'm not really into the into the jam so much as I, I like I just I legit like a bunch of the songs that yeah. they wrote. So I'm I'm already like a weird I'm already like a weird like outlier uh, as for like my, fandom anyway. Yeah, <laughs> as am I. And uh, um, I think one of the big things. Oh, so I, and I don't I don't connect. There's like bands I connect with a little bit better than. Um, the dead as far as like and I, I think I'm, uh, most music people are, can be well I think if you're a huge music fan you're well rounded enough to kind of go yeah yeah like everything you know and, and, but you know I don't I don't stick my uh, um, um, I don't and, I, and I'm not I, I have to say as much as I work in concerts I don't I'm not sure if I'm a good concert goer <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like uh, it's got to be a little bit of like a bus man's holiday for you <laughs> yeah like I, i'll go to, I, I will say the only exception that might be king gizzard i'll go okay. to king gizzard okay. all the time i like hanging out with people who are in, at king gizzard shows because they're all very well versed and they have it's a it's a far more eclectic crowd because they're a very eclectic band yeah um, yeah and uh um the the uh, uh so I, i'm much more like yeah but so um yeah everybody's got these uh so there's just everybody's blowing up and selling balloons full of nitrous oxide everywhere and and uh, oh I've heard um, Kyle's told me the tales <laughs> yeah there's the grilled cheese I had I ran into somebody my buddy and I came we got a we bought a, a this very very <laughs> we were walking past and someone goes that is a great grilled cheese man that's amazing and I'm just like what what <laughs> It's the most basic grilled cheese ever, but it's like the most comfortable. Yo, when you're high food. up your fucking ass though, and you eat like a really good ass grilled cheese sandwich, it's, man, like that slaps. Like I ain't gonna fall. I, 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 I don't. Do, I don't deny that it was a good grilled cheese. Like I, you know. Yeah. Um, it was you know the basic you know the white car as as, as the late great Saint Tony Bourdain like said you know that food that a grilled cheese sandwich you are it's probably the safest thing on earth you could eat because you have a white carbohydrate with a le- yellow cheese like substance and uh that's filling man that's fucking there's no way in hell that's right gonna there. go there's, there's no way in hell you're gonna have any sort of food poisoning or from bad bacteria and that stuff so yeah true true yeah just on the, that level the original like... vegan the, it's the original vegan item right yeah um, <laughs> so anyway I, um I, after almost losing my ticket, um, oof! Uh, I, I put it. I went because I, I left. I left. I bought all the Arby's. 
I have all my beef and cheddars and uh, a couple other sandwiches. I, and, and I put it in like a picnic, a Trader Joe's thermal bag, and I left it in the car while I was walking around. I was going to go back before I went to the show. Um, and I almost left my ticket in there in the car. So I'm waiting around, waiting for my guys, my friends to show up um, before we're going in to see Kyle and, and, and um, Ben. And um, I'm like, and I'm sitting outside of where everybody's scalping and doing the, I need a miracle, man. <laughs> and I'm like, am I going to become one of those guys right away? That's going to be bad. Like, Oh, shit. No, I found the ticket. I found the ticket. I kind of went in. And um, there's a giant bottleneck mm-hmm. in security. This is a mass of people. Like, oh, my God. COVID, yeah. It's like COVID time scary, mass of people. Uh-huh. And then I hear these people going, there's a whole short line in the back. Just You'll get in there right away if you go up this hill. And oh shit! <laughs> so I did that. Got in because at this nice, point, nice. like I missed the first song or so, um, uh-huh. and it was playing in the band. And I'm not a, a lot of people like that song. I'm not a fan of that song. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't care about that song too much. But um, I go in there and I finally find up, and it's just like the entire Hollywood Bowl. Just got like the the dancers and the you know you always have those the the, the way they they the band and them sort of self organizing everything. You have this the typical like political signature collection alley on the uh-huh. and you had like um you know shakedown street and um you know you have like your show there's only one taper i saw <laughs> with this wow just, crazy like well, uh, you know they i think they just i think they just just put up the sound boards of all their shows now so it's like you, you don't do even that. need to you can do that now so it doesn't really yeah you out. don't you don't even need to the boot like uh dead and company because like they just put out their own fucking yeah they, they just put put up their own fucking shows now <laughs> yeah so I, I i you know worked my way to finding uh kyle and ben who were already there and uh sat so that watched the show Fuck this yeah! Is, this is where my real. Kyle was sending me start. some clips of. Uh, he was sending me some clips of them playing Slipknot and shit. And I was like, Oh my god! Yeah, the second it. half was. I I thought I I knew all the songs from the second half, where they, uh-huh. they had like Sugar Mag. It went from Sugar Magnolia to, um, I believe, Estimated Profit. Oh man, yeah, those are good. That's a good set. And then they went from Help on the Way, Slipknot, and um, Franklin's Tower. Like the oh, first three songs. Oh. Mm, that's so, good that's good so, shit it was great and then they uh did the space shit sp- spacey drums which was like you know um and and uh um uh spacey drums and what else oh uh then i went to and then uh the other one they did another one jam do you know the other one uh which one it's called the other one Oh, it's called the song the is one. called the other one. Yeah, <laughs> I it's, guess it's, not. It's apparently. a famous. It's a it's a famous three over four. Like oh shit, yeah. It's like bothers. yeah. I, I guess I guess apparently not. It's it's a it's a classic live track. It's it's uh-huh. from the, the the even the studio version of the song is a live track off oh, of okay, Anthem, okay. from Anthem of the Sun, which is called a suite called That's It for the other one. Oh, okay. Which is one of those things where. This is where I'm going to diverge from Deadhead fans because I actually have real opinions about the Grateful Dead without actually <laughs> hating them. Yeah, <laughs> I find I find you know like this is where I find I find like there's a lot of different personalities in the group, and I like some more than others. Like Bill Kreutzmann is probably my favorite because he seems like the most chill dude. Yeah, <laughs> like he has this kind of egoless vibe to him where he's like, "Yeah, bring in Mickey Hart. Let's have some. We'll have some. We'll have some fun with another drummer." Um, you know. Uh, We'll have you know cool vibes, and he's not like a time guy. He's a feel guy. He's a you know, he's not. Mm-hmm. He knows he's not a good. He's not like the best drummer, but he can hold his own. He's got a good style. He's got a great snare tone. Um, and then you have um, uh, you know Jerry, who's like the kind of ethereal, like spiritual leader vibe. But I I, I have troubles with his uh, his ability to not make decisions. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like I don't want to be the bad guy, man. Like, well, you're being the bad guy by not being anything. So, like, yeah, like, like, yeah. As far as like you know, when they when they when the '90s came around and like Gen Xers started like getting into the dead and like you get kind oh, of yeah, preempt, yeah. you have like precursor to Woodstock '99 vibes where people are being kind of ag- agitators outside. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everybody else is very hippy dippy, and they're like these. There's certain like it's that happened again with Hell's Angels too. The Hell's Angels started showing up to shows. And they're just like the sort of like the uh, more libertarian fuck off. I do what I want. Freedom America thing. 
Yeah, yeah. Against this hippie kind of vibe, it doesn't quite. It's, it can clash if the if you have the if you have a bad chemical. If you're drunk clashes. off your fucking ass and you're mad and you just start fucking it, shoving it, some fucking hippies, it, some stinky hippies around <laughs> who are who are who are taking you know it's like weed and psychedelics who are not aggressive. So it's like the and like you know I, I talked with. It won't see. It won't make you. They won't make you aggressive, but they'll make you really fucking stupid, which is, which would piss off someone who is on drugs and angry. Also, sorry, my dogs are. That's okay. We have we have a house full of guests today, so my dogs are fucking are are ornery and screaming at everybody. Fair <laughs> uh, um, but I, anyway, the my and I I, I think Phil Lesh is kind of a pretentious asshole. <laughs> um, this is just based off their interviews and my reactions to them. I don't know that I've not met them. Yeah, um, yeah. Bob Weir seems like a cool dude. Um, although I think he was like an angry youth at one point, so he was like kind of like a one of those guys who'd be very aggressive as a youth. He would he chilled out over time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mickey also kind of has a little bit of a vibe of like, you know, we're really we're like some of the best musicians on the planet, man. We're like. I remember, like, they were talking about Crust. There's a documentary, if you check it out, called uh, Anthem to Beauty, which mm-hmm. covers the making of Anthem of the Sun and American Beauty. Oh, sweet. And they talk about, and there's two scenes, like, like, like two of those interviews with Phil and um, Mickey that kind of give you the vibe of, like, like they thought this was really cool or they, they have a kind of a high opinion of themselves that I can't get into. But they have, like, a, uh, for example, um, they were talking about this kind of goes back to what there was some of the other one um, where they're going, wow, we, we kind of spliced live takes live tracks and studio tracks together. This had never been done before. Never been done before for a reason at that time, yeah. because if you listen to live tracks in 1968, they sound like garbage. And, yeah. and they, it sounds really, really lo-fi and really, yeah. you know, like you want to get this vibe about the tune and it's like, you can do lo-fi if it's like intentional, but this was sort of like a, cause he goes from like this, the suite starts off with a Jerry little, like it sounds like a Jerry ballad kind of uh-huh. a sixties kind of vibe. It swings a little bit and then it goes, it hits right into this like live shake with, with the, with um, a live drum intro with, with Mickey and Bill and goes into the other one that we know. That with uh, Bob Weir's lyrics about you know Neil Cassidy and shit, and it sounds so bad. I'm like, oh man, the only time the better st- <laughs> <laughs> there's better sounding versions. There's better sounding live versions that I would say are the more official versions of it, or okay, better okay. better classics. So if you want to go, there's also a version of it on uh, like a German like beat club or something like that. Oh, nice. Um, nice. So like. It's like, oh, it's so innovative and amazing, and sort of like we're all nitrous oxide in the in the uh, we really pissed <laughs> off the engineers on this one. They were, I was like, yeah, yeah, it was like this sounds bad, man. Like I don't think it sounds good. Yeah, I wonder, sorry, yeah, my, man, like, my my dead hot takes. I don't really care for uh, I don't really care for that live version of Dark Star that's on um, Live Dead. Is that yeah, Live Dead? Yeah. I'm the, the one that's everyone's like, dog fucking. I'm like, I'm like, it's, it's like 24 the bass minutes is long. like kind of going out of tune and like it drives me fucking crazy. No, listening the, to the, it, live, so. the Live Dead takes the, the Live Dead out the cut is from Saint Stephen to Turn On Your Love Light is much better than the Dark Star. Oh, one. okay, okay. That, in my opinion, and I, and I think it's correct. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> the other one was was that uh, Mickey Hart was talking about, you know, when they were singing like the crowd, they were comparing themselves to Crosby, Stills, and Nash because they were good friends at the time. And, um, um, you know, they were talking about like, you know, and Mickey's like, well, they, 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 we couldn't sing like they could, you know, but they couldn't play like we could. And like, yeah. that's, <laughs> I don't know about that. I feel I like they're both, I, think, I feel like they're both pretty comparable. I feel yeah. like they're both. Also, I think, level. well, Phil Lesh can't carry a pitch for most of his career. So like, yeah. <laughs> live anyway, studio, uh, you have time to get that down, but you listen to any, any of those, some of, even the live dead. When he's singing with everybody else, and you get mm-hmm. that kind of every time it's like, ah, like, like you hit like someone, he's like overreaching his 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 lungs, oh, and it, no. it break his voice breaks and kind of oh, goes fl- goes flat. And you're like, <laughs> uh, and, and he would and he would argue because he's he's like he studied he was like an avant avant garde uh, trumpet player stuff stuff like like really digging into Stockhausen and stuff. He could probably make some sort of like retro. He could retrofit an excuse into saying, "Well, it's you know atonal." He's like, I, I was sucking on know, purpose. The notes between the notes, man. It was notes. art. Yeah. yeah, it was microtones, man. 
Yeah. So it's a whole level to that where I'm just like, yeah, I can't really. I mean, I, 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 I as a personality, I have a hard time dealing with that. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that's that's. Uh, anyway, so the show. We'll talk about how the show went. Um, John Mayer was. Here's here's my other probably the biggest hot take of the whole thing. John mm-hmm. Mayer kicked ass. Hell yeah. <laughs> and there's always the people like there's deadheads going like, yeah, John Mayer, man. Oh, this is not Jerry Garcia. Like there's some guy like on his ass and like nitrous oxide just like <laughs> just, just like shouting at the end of the show. We're like waiting to like did waiting to get in the cars. And it's like you know, and I was I already thought this, but I was like I was talking to Kyle this during the show. I'm like fucking fucking um John Mayer, I think, is a better guitar player than Jerry Garcia. I think it's John Mayer is a really it is I like think... oddly a very talented guitarist, and it like freaks me out that like it's like he basically just went from making just like shit fucking like elevator music to <laughs> basically like because like, like I don't I don't think because I remember when hearing like, John Mayer was in the Dead, and I was like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah. you mean the guy who wrote that fucking. Waiting on the world Shit. to change. You know? They're fucking swimming in deep sea. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, that guy's in the fucking dead. He, you know, I'm like, give me high fives. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, I, I remember when that happened. And it's like, turns out that guy like actually knows how to play really good guitar. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> the first time I ever saw him was like the first edition of the Clapton Crossroads Guitar Festival. And like, uh-huh. he was better than a lot of the headlining or more famous acts. Damn, that dude crazy. could shred, and it was just like that guy was so much. He was like he was outplaying like Santana in that show. No, oh, Jesus you know, Christ, like, stuff like wow, that guy was like really fucking good. And that was like earlier in the, um, that was before like way on the world to change and stuff like on the Continuum album. Yeah, and yeah. So like, like I knew that guy was good, and then like the fact that he was having like tumultuous celebrity problems with fame and whatnot, like with whatever mm-hmm. relationship he was in. And I think like him playing in the dead was just sort of like I just want to play guitar with like a jam band with the yeah, dead yeah. guys. That sounds like a fun time. And I think and he could he could play like Jerry. He has the tone. Yeah. Um, and he could actually he has better and he has better technique and not better technique, but he's got better soul. He's got better phrasing. Okay, okay. And because Jerry was noodling running up the running up the scales. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The, every every deadhead critic or every deadhead uh grateful dead hater will criticize Jerry for like knowing one jokingly knowing one scale and running up and down that scale the for 30 minutes. <laughs> wow. Pentatonic for 15 minutes, man. Go for it. <laughs> you know, um, of course, you know, it's probably not as true as we like to think. Um, the better Jerry solos, in my opinion, were far more uh, better when they were constructed into like time, like songs, like morning dew. Was really yeah. Good. Yeah. In 72. Um, so, that's my like everybody who is not and that's my to add on to that everybody in that show who was not an m- original member of the dead was a lot <laughs> better than the original members of the dead <laughs> I, yeah i mean like, the, like at, the at this point in time dead, like, <laughs> yeah at this point in time i thought bill i know bill was having like a health like he had some he was like recovering from a cold or whatever but oh he, shit like he was really sloppy and i like bill but he was, yeah. he was he was sloppy i couldn't hear mickey for all the other stuff Oh, he's fuck. doing the other. He's doing the other like polyrhythmic shit mid song, like with the other songs playing the auxiliary like mm-hmm. percussion parts. You couldn't hear it very well. Oh um, no! Uh, and then uh, Bob can't hear anymore. I'm. Oh, I mean, fuck. which makes sense. Bob Weir yeah. has pretty much lost his hearing, and I know that because he's playing a strat for the most of the show, clean and bright as fuck. It was like <laughs> the most bright strat I've heard in a very long time, and it's just like Damn. that is that is. And it's it was pretty bad, um, it's like, it's like, oh, like you know, because he would have like you know in his in his days he'd be playing like three thirty fives and more Gibson bass guitars, and it would be a little bit better. Uh, it was you know not as even like even Jerry playing Gibsons sounded cooler than the the Strat onward whatever the custom made guitar he had. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, um, uh, so that that whole vibe was was uh. His guitar was like clean and super clean, super bright, and I'm like, that has to be because he can't hear it anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that, it's like he he would play. He had like a three thirty five for like one part of the show, and I'm like, keep that, keep that, keep that, and it's like, <laughs> so, um, and then the bass player, I forgot his name, and the keyboard player, I forgot his name, but the bass player was was in the Almond Brothers 
uh, work pool, uh, pool of pool of musicians. Um, and the keyboard player was awesome too, but his organ and could, at, on a mix level, it was way too bright and dry. Mm-hmm. Like, like every time he had the organ, it was like blaring into my ears. Oh, just fuck. really sharp. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's good, but man, it's loud and yeah. <laughs> Well, that's weird. So, just man, maybe, maybe they're maybe they're sound maybe they're sound guys just sleeping on it last night or something. Know. John 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 Mayer was was amazing. Even Fuck. doing the, I gotta even go, doing I gotta go see him. I want. I, I, it's always like whenever it, they come around, I feel like it's always like oh, I'm like doing shit that weekend. Like it's never been a good it's, time. It's but. a cool show. Uh, um, it's it, it's a cool show. I'm not like I probably would maybe go again, uh, knowing mm-hmm. what I know like, on a first time experience. Like I have this vibe of like. Um, of just kind of uh, um, uh, you know trying to understand what the show's about and kind of like there, it, it runs the sort of rhythm of, of of a jam band show where they take a giant break in the middle and then they go into more spacey stuff in the end and sure. um, you know they play more tunes that I didn't not, I didn't uh, they didn't have as I mean they there was a couple tunes I knew vaguely in the beginning mm-hmm. they had high time I liked that mm-hmm. um, they played ramble on rose but I cool you know, cool. Um. Uh, they had a couple tunes that were very mid tempo y. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, there's a couple tunes that need to pick up a little bit. I think like, <laughs> like the, the pace was really slow. You're like, dude, dude. Like, I think estimated profit could was like a little like need to pick up a little bit more. You know? Cause yeah, it's yeah, got, yeah. It's got an odd time to it, I think, and it's like, but do 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 do. <laughs> plotting a little too hard yeah um or sugar magnolia is similar to the fiber it's like and and maybe i don't know what the age those guys are at i didn't like mickey look like he was they would show him on camera and he's just sort of like he, he almost looked like he was doing it in his sleep or he's that's just how, like, uh, he, you can see him what? chewing gum it's going or it's like dude when i that's how that's how when i saw yes that like alan white was like he was like a corpse, man. Like I he bet. was not doing well. Like that's how he was playing. It was just like it just like looked like he was fucking. It looked I, like someone where, probably just like had like had like propped up like a board or something in the back. Like <laughs> that's where I give like Bill Bruford props for like calling it a day when he did. It's like you know, yeah, you know, like um, and that, that kind of leads me into another thing because that like we could talk about jam bands a little bit here, or even the idea of collective improvisation because we're both King Crimson guys. I yeah, think, yeah. I think you and I are we're like uh, 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 we. I think Almond Brothers, um, and and then the Dead, um, mm-hmm. and I, I I think I just kind of think about it where that like the Dead are far and Fish, Fish is actually pretty good, really good too actually at the jam thing. They're probably probably, but they're they're tighter. So all, all the other bands are far more tighter than the Dead. And the Dead are the most famous jam band. And they're the slot. It's because they have the widest mass. Yeah, it's because it, they're the widest mass of peels. They're not. They're not particularly I, I, froggy like fish. I you think know? it's the they're drugs. Really... I think they, they have like. Oh a, yeah. They have a they have a psychedelic crutch they lean on for like to yeah. get away with like playing <laughs> super sloppy. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and me being this being sober at the show was like, um, like. There's like a point where like, you're like, okay, I'm sitting down. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, a long day, man. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I get it. You have some noodling. Or like, th- and it would, people take breaks to sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. But like, it was like, uh, it was like, okay, we we can get yeah. on. This. this is like, <laughs> you know, John, John John Mayer's like, you know, like I said, tones in the hands. He's got the best of it, and he was, yeah, much much more versatile than Jerry. And I will take yeah. on all haters and all debate. Like I'm, I'm. This is a, my hot take of of hot takes to get attention on 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 this show. Um, <laughs> Jerry Garcia, kind of overrated. Um, yeah, we're really glad good he's guitar player, dead, you but he's fuckers. not. He's not God. <laughs> the cult of Jerry is like is a thing, and and uh, um, I will I will I will gladly argue because I don't I don't hate the guy. I like this guitar playing. Uh, I wish he had a different. I wish he would thicken up his tone once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> um, which is why I like the early stuff because he had a thicker guitar tone from the uh, Gibsons. But anyway, um, and I, I was prepping. I was listening to Live at the Fillmore East the night before. Oh, nice! Because nice. I think that might be of. It's not my. It's like my second favorite live album, maybe third. Yeah, Live at Leeds, Secret World, Fillmore East. I think it's three. Um. 
And I think the and I'm like I listened to that band because that's that that's more blues based and southern based, but um, they are fucking both two uh, both players have like serious killer tone like Dickie and you know Dwayne have killer tones, play their asses off. Um, I, I don't know that 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 band was that album is sick as fuck. Um, nice, nice. I'll check. I'll have to. Uh, have you, have you not heard that one yet? One up. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't listened. To, I haven't listened to a lot of. Um, I know there's like a million fucking live albums, but just yeah, I got Phil, Phil, Phil Maurice, just the, the Phil classic Maurice. Phil Maurice one. Just listen to that, you'll be fine. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah like because like in memory Elizabeth Reed and you know mm-hmm. you don't love you. There it is, right there. No, fucking. <laughs> Let me get this phone call for a minute. Oh yeah, sure. Hey Alex. Good, good. I'm on a I'm on a pod at the moment. Tell him he's live uh, on so the air. I, Get him to I say something probably, embarrassing. Probably missed the movie. All right, yeah, I'll let you know. Awesome, thanks. But that's the uh, that's the homies trying to get you to they, get they him wanna, on the. They Dune want me to watch for... Dune, which is fine. I'll, I'll, I'll I have no problem with watching Dune. Uh, How do you um, feel about Dune? Are you a fan? Are you are you? I in? have no opinion. I I've the only Dune thing related thing I've seen is the documentary of uh, J- Jodorowsky. Oh, the Jodorowsky one, yeah, yeah, which is kind of it's cool. I like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's cool. When you're like, that's the story of most most of me and me our friends kind of coming up with cool movie <laughs> ideas and cool creative ideas and never it's following like, all right let's them. find the money for this and then yeah <laughs> our case it's not money it's just like drive <laughs> yeah i know yeah it's like cri- the crippling depression sets crippling in depression like, i really want to do this yeah yeah but anyway back 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 to back to i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna spin this off so we have like Dwayne, uh, I it's harder to do. So maybe I'll, I'll ease off the Almond Brothers because we haven't heard the album. Um, oh, I thought we were still talking about the Dead. I was fucking. We are. <laughs> we're about, I'm, I'm going into jam band debates. Okay. All collect, right. All right. And the idea of collective improvisation, um, because you have the Dead, right? Like I said, they they can have they have the drug drug element in in sort of community element where they could play sloppy, and you could probably see the next show, and they may not be as sloppy, or you're too stoned to notice. Or it works for you. Um, uh, I would say, because, um, yeah, there's a lot of, I think the drums were really sloppy on the show. Um, and, like, I was at a point where I'm going, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I was thinking about this because I was also, I listened to, um, after the show, I listened to King Crimson, Starless, and Bible Black. Oh, nice. And that's another album where it's like we don't have enough material <laughs> to make the album, and thus we also have no, not enough material of original material to make a show. So we're just going to collectively put shit together and improv it in this kind of cool, like non-traditional blues way, um, and kind of make things work. And mm-hmm. of course, I've talked at I think I've talked probably too many times about how why that stuff works. And what is and mainly has nothing to do with Fripp and um, Cross doing the weird, edgy shit. It was more about um, Bruford and Wetton locking in on a groove, and then you can yeah, put yeah. that as a foundation to put the weird uh, avant-garde, atonal stuff on top of it, and it sounds cool once you get that going. Uh, and of course, you have to get the build it up to that too. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know where you stand on that, like. Um, if you have a preference, like, like for me, I, I like, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's interesting. King Crimson, King Crimson comes at it from like a very, like, uh, like they're very like bottom heavy, you know, like they're, uh, because I mean, I mean, most of the jam bands, it's like, you know, you'll hold, it's like, you know, they'll just like hold down a groove or like a sort of a simple, a simple chord progression and just kind of shred over that. Whereas King Crimson is like rhythmically, they're like, you know, improvising too. So it's like, you know, it's like, Tony Levin and Bill Bruford got to like fucking like, you know, it's, it's yeah. like, they got to, I don't know. It's cool. I, I, I like it when the, uh, I, I like my music to be as complex as possible. So like, it's easy. It, so it's w- when it's like the rhythmic stuff is like taking priority. And it's like, you can tell those guys are like really fucking locked in and like experimenting. Like that's really neat. Um, or just or like, like in the, like in the recent, like King Crimson shows where they've got like the three drummers, they're yeah. playing discipline, yeah. you know, and they're all fucking taking turns doing those fucking that, like, drum I will fill. say, 
And this like is that a, is insane. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go on a limb here again. Another hot take: the space j- j- space drum thing, mm-hmm. not as cool as the triple drummer indiscipline thing. Yeah, because they're all I mean, really like, fucking good yeah. uh, in King Crimson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all like virtuous, but that's uh, it's kind of like I don't know if that's fair to say because it's coming from a different like mindset, where mm-hmm. like you're, like the whole a whole Grateful Dead experience is kind of trying to recreate the acid test every night. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. A certain opinion where like the whole acid test concept was like everybody's going to be dropping acid at like all night, all morning until like the break of dawn and like it you know i and I, I actually have a, a manuscript from uh oh sorry uh i have some i'm i might have a a prankster possibility to get one of the pranksters on uh, oh shit which would be cool um i gotta uh but uh i gotta read i gotta read his thing um but that whole and the whole idea is that you you kind of it's one us again it's just we we lack material we got to keep making stuff up on the fly uh, and when you're on, when everybody's kind of tripping on the whole thing, you kind of can have this, um, you have a lot more forgivability on how you're playing, um, and how you're kind of moving with the whatever. And you can kind of, and when you're on it yourself, you're kind of like not sure exactly how you're, you know, where you, maybe yeah, where you want. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't really taken psychedelics. So it's harder for me to kind of, um, empathize. Yeah. Yeah. But the, um, the, the, compare it to like the King Crimson stuff where it's a little more intellectually driven a little more um, but still it's still like primal yeah, that yeah maybe, maybe that's maybe that's what I like about it is like this like yeah the percussive nature the percu- their percussive nature of their like improvisations is like more it, like gets your fucking pulse going <laughs> it gets a, as much as I like, I like my com- lizard brain I like complex stuff too uh, but I also like sick grooves even more if it has yeah 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 which makes the fail cootie stuff really awesome because you have these like oh yeah bass lines like i was listening to that in confusion you're like and like give me the bass line give me the drum beat and then like cool stuff after that you can have um i was like even i was watching the glass animals show or i was working a show or that came to town and i was like I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. And like every song has the same drum groove and everybody just kind of eats it up. And I'm like, why are you guys eating it up? It's like, this is, this is, um, yeah, it's, it's safe and predictable. It's, it's what the kids want. They don't want anything new. They want the, what, what if you had a, something that was safe or safe, but just a little bit more interesting. And yeah. That was kind of stuff like, <laughs> even like, just give me like a, like, uh, what do you call it? Um, just funk grooves in general. Give me like the cold sweat groove. Yeah, you know, yeah. That'll that'll take me, you know, like that's what like the some of the hip hop stuff in the early nineties. Um uh like the dot with the doc, like uh maybe Dr. Dre and and and, and Wu Tang and stuff like that. They had really cool drum grooves that kind of like you know that worked. Um I'm not did saying you ever listen to Henry Cow? Did, did you ever did we ever listen to Henry Cow like back when we were in, in uh Back when we were in like so. Cal State together and fucking grooving, and fucking hanging out and doing the doing the fucking musician lifestyle, fucking uh, you, you'd probably be into Henry Cow. They're 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 like technically a Canterbury prog scene band, but they're like way better than all the other Canterbury prog scene bands. Like they're very like improv heavy. Okay, and uh, I still they, have a soft spot for Camel, but. Oh yeah. yeah, but but but, but like Henry Cow is like so much more like virtuosic. Like they're fucking it. It's uh, all of those guys. All the guys in Henry Cow are also in fucking like other bands. Just you know, just because like the nature of prog bands is like they play with fucking every everyone. <laughs> they yeah. just like swap their own musicians around. Um, but yeah, they have they have some like incre- really incredible like improvisational stuff. I'll, I'll send you one of their live albums. Um, okay. It's pretty fucking yeah. Um, it's 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 pretty fucking solid. Like they 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 do like really brainy weird. Um, like I know that legendarily they once just went on tour with like three minutes of written material, and would just like they're like fuck it, every show is different. <laughs> We're just gonna fucking improv the whole fucking show. <laughs> yeah, they do a lot of. Uh, they have like a lot of um, like read players and stuff. So they okay. they're a little they're a little less rock. And a little more, they're a little more like jazz combo, 
but they're still really fucking weird. Like they're still definitely like a in the in the progressive rock area. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. And you know, um, acid coffee. Um, Hell yeah, it's coming yeah, back to haunt you. It's coming back to haunt me. Yeah, I've been, um, I've been, I've been, I had my first cup of of real coffee the other day. I haven't, I haven't done any fucking caffeine for like probably like two years now. And like, I was at this like all night movie marathon with Ben a couple of weeks ago over at the New Beverly Theater out in out in uh, Hollywood. Mm. I guess it's West Hollywood. And I fucking made a. Uh, uh, oh, I got a, a cup of. I, I I was just like, I'm not gonna fucking make it. Like, if I don't have some fucking, if I don't have some fucking stimulants. Yeah. It was That's like, when it really it really helps, and I think what I've done lately is if I have to, if I really need it, I'll, I'll there's like various levels of caffeine intensity, like cold brews and espressos have extreme like high content. Yeah, yeah. Like but you feel a little rattled. Like con- concentration is, is the right <laughs> word. Um, and if I if if I'm sleep deprived, I need that. If I'm not sleep deprived, I will take normal coffee. Yeah, or, yeah. Or or uh, whatever, but. Or that was a fun experience experiencing coffee again for the first time. I bet. <laughs> you're sitting there, and you're just like, "Oh man, this is fucking." That was the other thing, shit, man. I, I I did my because I mean, like the whole the 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 beef for rundown is essentially is like mostly you know alcohol based, but I've I've always been more of a stimulant person, so uh, uh, I coffee is my drug of choice. So going to this show, I, I actually did have like two giant like cups of like um, uh, Italian coffee. Like, oh, there you go. That's why you think they needed to speed up their music. So like, I was music walking... needs to be faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bright. I can hear it now. Um, yeah, you fucking yeah. You did a bunch of coke before going to the Grateful Dead show. You moron. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's a higher beef. Yeah, yeah which would grateful. Punish it. Steve went to a Grateful Dead show with nothing but beef and cheddar classics and cup and coffee to to, uh, <laughs> to experience the 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 thing. It's and it's interesting because it's yeah, I, and then this is me being like such a not non non conformist of the thing. Let's, Is someone breaking into your room? <laughs> Okay, I gotta take a break from it. I gotta move a car. Yeah, sure, man. Hang tight. We'll wrap, we'll wrap it up soon. Man, you guys missed it. A bunch of people just tried to break in. A okay. bunch of people just tried to break in to punish Steve's house. I just watched him like CQC two men to death. We had to cut it out of the episode for legal reasons, but that was fucking crazy. It, it was, yeah. No comment. Um, <laughs> So I don't yeah so we're, I don't know where we were we're talking about jam bands but I think I think we're, we've kind of made our my, my point our point about uh I, I would we've made our Grateful Dead hot takes that's going to completely alien us alienate us from the seventy uh, year old hippie crowd or even well, sorry, even guys. even the the millennial <laughs> kind of like I want to join a cult kind of vibe I, it, <laughs> I <laughs> that's the thing is like I kind of get that I, I do get a cult vibe from this thing where it's like you and maybe i'm 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 maybe i'm a control freak and and maybe i just don't want to be subjected into a group mentality of letting myself into that situation yeah you know yeah. what i mean like it's cuz it's like I, and 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 maybe that's a critical thinking part of me cuz it's like i i i like the band i don't like them that much where i want to go just like dive in and just let it happen because I, I don't like the music that much to go just go you know i like it it's great songs great playing um but you know i think they had an off night in my opinion uh, mm-hmm. it was good it was a good show but it was it was like i'm not gonna like give yeah yeah like the drummers a pass just for being if it's hard to tell because it's also another one of those things at the hollywood bowl where you're up a bit and you don't see what's happening on the surface level, so it's like oh yeah, true. You know, but like Mickey's mix was like the, Mickey was quiet in his drumming, but like was he the one? Like I can't tell if <laughs> if Bill's playing the main groove. The way that works is Bill plays the main groove. He's the main groove guy. He's like the R and B kind of drummer dude. Mm-hmm. And Mickey does all the uh, polyrhythmic, you know, world music kind of stuff. Excuse me. 
And so when you get that, it kind of it's a cool concept too, because that's the way. This, there's only a few ways to kind of do the double drummer thing. Is you're mm-hmm. playing the same stuff at the same time, or you're playing off each other, or you're doing like one's a, one's a solid groove, the other one's supplemental auxiliary polyrhythmic stuff. <clears throat> so, I, if if he's if they're if he's if he's doing stuff that sounds like Bill's kind of not landing the fill right or kind of getting the things. It sounds like Bill's not landing a fill. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like that. And you know, it could have like, you know, God bless me. He's been playing this stuff for 50 years. So <laughs> like, yeah, true. I, he never, <laughs> Who so, knows, man? So it, it, it could be a number of different things. So it's, you know, it's hard to like get on somebody's case when they've been playing for half a century. Yeah, style yeah. of music and it just it's like, like, it's like yeah he's play, probably played this song a hundred thousand times perfectly yeah. <laughs> i could sort of like get past although it just kept driving me crazy ever i'm trying to get into a groove and it keeps it keeps stumbling yeah it keeps every, fucking up yeah yeah <laughs> it's like stumbling and stuttering and stuff like, you know um but uh and then like bill's guitar or bob's guitar was just so fucking bright it was obnoxious and then um but I think John and the, the John Mayer was f- fucking cool. Like he was, yeah. there were some good licks. We're like, that's, that's great. That was awesome. Like great moves, like great, great phrasings. Um, and I, I will stand by him being a better overall guitar player than All right. one um, Jerry Garcia. Well, there I you have, have it guys. Great. Grateful dead. One out of 10 worst band ever from, <laughs> from the, from lost beat six. That's the official review. Give us five stars if you liked what we said. Give us <laughs> one star if you disagreed with what I said. If you yeah. agree, if you vote, if you even review this thing, thank you for listening. Yeah, uh, you know, appreciate you uh, uh, like taking the time to hear us rant about James Bond, Silent Hill, and 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 Deadheads as a whole. <laughs> and it's 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 a culture. It's I will say the Deadhead thing is a cultural phenomenon. I'm. It's something I'm. I have a sort of a gonzo outsider mentality to it where I'm just like, this is, I, I don't mind inserting myself into a situation like that where I'm not really in line with, and I, like I could agree politically, I could agree musically, but just on a lifestyle sort of like, you know, um, I'm not convinced. Like, it's sort of the, uh, I, I'm a very, I live in a lot of um, the Anthony Bourdain sort of self doubt, Socratic, question a lot of things so when when people are just kind of aligned with yeah is this a, you know if they have a, if they have a culture that lives you know conforms to their way they want to live their life by all means go do it i'm not sure if i can essentially do that um which is kind of like the beefer thing i think most of the beefers you talk to uh that you know us kind of are like this group of uh specific very individual in almost ultra individualistic people yeah, it's yeah. It's like we have opinions, but we don't like completely. Uh, we don't completely um, conform to any specific movement where we're like, "Yep, we are totally socialists." We believe yeah, everything yeah. below. Like <laughs> we're not. We're not going on the level of like, you know, if we have socialistic we, t- tendencies, we we're not. We celebrate our. We celebrate our internal diversity, and that's what brings us together. Yeah, yeah. You won't find us like you know bad mouthing America to the point where we think Stalin was a good dude. You know, like it doesn't happen. I don't know. I might do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, whatever. There you, there you go. Like, there you go. And it was, it was only like, what, like 10 million people fucking died. It made the Soviet stock stronger. <laughs> not as, you know, you know, not all those like weak people who need food around. Were you that only the hardiest stock who, who could I just, just wanna, eat, get I just away by eating if, their beard hairs for lunch? My question, to you, my question to you is: Would you stop clapping for the guy after he made a speech? <laughs> well, I stop clapping, nah, dude. I just be, I just still be sitting just there, just like, like you're still talking, you're fused. Yeah, Liz, I love this. This is great. What? So brave. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's so daring. How can you say something so controversially? It's so brave. <sighs> oh, 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 man. So <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the pod now, but I think um, I want to talk to you. We'll talk yeah, about sure, after man. show. So I'm going to stop this uh, 
and all right uh, well happy halloween everybody is this yeah, going out tomorrow it's going out tomorrow so enjoy all right enjoy. well be a... safe be safe out there keep your hands washed uh, i guess uh this is halloween's probably one of the safer holidays to celebrate since you're probably all wearing masks anyway so uh don't do anything i wouldn't do kids and uh maintain uh ma- maintain your composure cut loose but don't don't hurt yourself but happy halloween and hail satan satan loves you kids